welcome back to the wellness check today is going to be the video that talks about the R in EMDR my last video was about the D in EMDR so if you haven't checked that one out it would be beneficial to look at that and watch it before going into this one because this is one of the later last stages of EMDR and what to expect so if you remember correctly the E and M stand for eye movement. Just a quick little review, if, you, if you've heard anything about my videos before, the eye movement portion is where your eyes are moving back and forth. You're either tracking uh, your therapist's hands moving back and forth, or you're engaging in some sort of bilateral stimulation on your own if it's virtual. Um, you have there tappers that you can use in the office, and all of them stimulate both of the hemispheres of the brain at the same time whilst simultaneously thinking about something specific that we've set up to work on in terms of trauma. After setting up the template and working on something, zoomed in on something to work on with the trauma. So that's the EM. What we experience uh, when we're doing EMDR, when we're having EMDR done to us is that there's this involuntary eye movement that happens and it looks very similar to rapid eye movement when you're in the deep stages of sleep um, and it's a similar kind of brain wave activity as well so that's the EM and if you remember from the last video the D is for desensitization and go and watch that video I'm gonna tell you more about the R what it means when it's appropriate to use it and what to expect in the therapist's office when we're in the R phase of EMDR. So in order to do that, I kind of have to bridge into what the D means again. And if you remember, we are working our way down the activation scale. 10 is very activating. It's the most activating or distressing or disturbing you could possibly feel something about. Whereas zero is, it's not activating, it's not distressing at all, it actually feels okay, it's pretty neutral. Our goal as a team in this process is to get the activation number down to a zero, or what they call an ecological one. And really it happens more often than you'd think. I would say the biggest reason somebody can't get down all the way to a zero is the comment, that this comment is made in the office a lot, well, I feel so much better about it. I'm not activated. I don't feel upset about it. I just feel like I need to go live life a little bit and, and feel this, right? So we, we think it in our brain, we feel it in our body, but now we got to go live it and experience it in order for it to really ring true. And oftentimes it does. It really begins to click quickly in the outside life, outside of um, the therapy room. And then with time, the client will come back and say, it's a zero when I check in with them or with an, with an EMDR therapist, it's a zero. So once we get the activation levels down to a zero or an ecological one, that's when we uh, have the green light to go into the reprocessing phase. That's what R stands for, reprocessing. Eye movement, desensitization and reprocessing. It's a mouthful. This is a magical moment in EMDR. There has been a lot of tough work done up to this point. The most grueling work is in the D phase, the desensitization phase where we're really sorting through and processing the traumatic material and all of the emotions and all of the negative core beliefs associated with that. The reprocessing phase is really cool. So I'm gonna explain it to you now. While we set up the EMDR template in the very beginning, before starting EMDR, there's a portion on there where it asks, what would you rather believe about yourself when you think about this upsetting memory? Now remember, this is before we've done any of the, the desensitization work. So sometimes it's hard for someone to come up with a positive cognition or in other words, a positive statement about themselves, a belief about themselves when they think about the trigger or the trauma. So it's time to revisit that comment. We pull out that original sheet of paper and we look and we say, okay, so back when we first started this, this is the comment that you said about the positive cognition. You said, for example, it's over, I'm safe now. 
I am worthy of love, etc., etc., etc. So I'm going to ask, I'm going to say, does this statement still feel true? Um, and or is there another statement that you want to put in its place? So we're starting to get the gears rolling to work in a much more positive mindset. So we go in, we might change the positive cognition statement a little bit. Maybe instead of it's over, I'm safe now. It also includes something like, I can succeed. I can do hard things, right? So we just really want to tailor whatever that um, positive statement is specific to how we feel now that the really grueling hard work is done, okay? So we come up with our new positive statement and we write that down and that's part of our measurable evidence that we're gonna be working with. We also take a, another scale, a Likert scale number, it's a different scale, and we say, all right, now on the scale of one to seven, how true does this feel to you now? We did this before when we originally set up the protocol. Now we're gonna do it again. So typically we already see a pretty big leap, um, a positive leap here, Whereas maybe it's over, I'm safe now, when we first began, felt like a zero, not true at all, or like a one, it was just not even on the radar, not true about me at all. Now it feels maybe like a four, maybe it feels like a five. We write that down, we take that into consideration, and we say, okay, this is what we're gonna do. Since we've done the, re the desensitization, we're gonna go into the reprocessing, and what we're gonna do is we're going to hold images, snapshots, memories, <clears throat> and things associated with the trauma, we're gonna bring that forward again. You're gonna notice way less activation about it because you're at a zero or one, so this shouldn't be upsetting or disturbing to you. If it is, we're gonna go back into the desensitization phase. So now we're bringing this box forward again, we're peeking open the lid to the original trauma and the trigger, and we're saying, I'm gonna hold this in front of me and acknowledge the feelings present and pair it with my positive statement. It's over, I'm safe now. I'm worthy of love, I can succeed, whatever the statement is. So now what we're doing, this is extremely powerful. We're holding the thing that has been bothering us and affecting us so much, which is now pretty much neutral, if not completely neutral, along with a positive statement about yourself. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna encode that into your nervous system very similarly to what we did with the desensitization phase. So it's over, I'm safe now, here's the original target, the trauma, it feels okay. Now the client, you, you're gonna close your eyes, we're gonna do the same kind of tapping, whether it's bilateral stimulation tappers, whether you're doing the butterfly hug, um, whatever it is, we're gonna go back into that and this time we're gonna do it really slowly. So look at this. When we're in the desensitization phase, you're gonna notice the passes going pretty quickly, right? Or the taps going pretty quickly. This is about the pace. When we are in the reprocessing phase, we're actually gonna go a lot slower and we're gonna really shorten up the uh, duration of the sets. So now it looks something like this. Really slow. And that's on purpose, that's for a reason. And we're only gonna do it for a couple seconds. Or if you're tapping on your own, if you're on a virtual screen with your therapist, it's gonna look like this. Slow, all right? So what we're doing is we're literally changing the way that your synapses work in your brain on a cellular level. When we engage in the bilateral stimulation, we do it slowly and we're pairing a neutral now trauma with a positive statement. We're gonna be able to bring those two things together. It's really, really neat. So through this experience, we're also gonna be getting measurable evidence here on how true does it feel now? Is it still a four or has it gotten to a five? Okay, great, it's a five, it's a little higher. Where do you feel that five in your body? Where do you feel positive sensations coming up? Notice that, let's go again, all right? So just like we wanted to get the desensitization phase, the trauma material down to a zero or a one, we want to get the reprocessing phase up to a seven, because seven is the best. Seven feels completely true about you. 
So we're going to keep kind of doing that, noticing if there's any activation or disturbance. We can always go back to the desensitization phase and, and sort through that. But eventually we want to get to a seven where it feels 100% true in and out, in your mind and in your body. It is over. I'm safe now. I am worthy of love. Even when your mind remembers something that it, at one point was very upsetting and very physiologically activating. It's a, such a cool experience. That's why I call it magical. It's just not everybody thinks that they can be free from their traumatic experiences and it's been so cumbersome throughout their lives that there's just no way that they will ever feel better. And they are very secure in that statement. And to see an individual come 360 and say, wow, I can't believe I'm saying this and I can't believe I'm living this way, but this is, this is how I am now. I feel so much better. There's so much relief about this. I can sleep. I can go to that part of town again. Whatever the situation is, there is freedom around it. And it's all about the process. You just have to trust the process. Trusting that your mind knows how to heal, it wants to heal, and it knows how to do it better than if we were to just sit and chat about it. So that's something I, I do guide my clients on a lot is if you're a really cerebral, logical, analytical person, this is going to be a challenge because um, we're not sitting here trying to figure things out. We're not drawing a line from A to B. What we're doing is we're actually learning how to let go of that and let your mind, the activated part of your mind, the limbic system do the work for you. And every single time it works way better than if we were to try and sit and figure it out and talk about it. So that is the beautiful phase of what's called reprocessing. I'm going to do one last video of the tail end of everything with EMDR. Um, but the D and the R, I really wanted to, to put the information out there. So anyone wondering what this is like, what to expect, you have a front row seat to it. Anything after the reprocessing phase is just tying up loose ends, and I will go into the importance of that as well. Um, there's eight phases of EMDR, and a good clinician will be getting through eight of the phases before um, we decide you're ready to graduate from therapy or you're ready to flee the nest or whatever you want to call it. So stay tuned for my next video. It will be just about wrapping up the loose ends now that you've done all the hard work and now that you are in a much better positive mindset both in the office and out i hope that this helps at least some of you thank you for chiming in and checking in with your wellness i'll see you soon